Well, welcome to this tutorial here. I'm going to show you how to make an automatic directory in a worksheet here for your entire workbook. So you click a button and you have information automatically generated from every single worksheet tab, as well as a link to these tabs and a link back to the dashboard. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to hit Alt F8 to run this macro, but you could attach it to a button, of course. And there we go. We have a directory with a name for every one of the worksheets the sales amount, and this is hard-coded. It's not a formula, but of course you could change that. And then we have a summary for that person and a link to their sheet. You click that, you get here, and we also have placed a link back to the dashboard. Why is that important? Because sometimes when you export a workbook, let's say from a system that wants to generate a bunch of sales reports or something like that, you may have many, 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 many worksheets. And it's very nice to be able to go like this, to go back to the front, and then Go to a new worksheet and back to the front. So the only thing that was here before I ran the macro is the basic data right here in this worksheet. And I'm going to show you how to create this macro from scratch and where you can add all sorts of little additional things because there is so, so much more that you can do, which all of you who are taking my full VBA course definitely know, especially if you want to add some shapes here automatically, like some little buttons instead of just hyperlinks. That's a very fun little feature to do, but it requires a bit of code. So anyway, let me go ahead and clear this guy out and let's get started. All right, we've got our workbook now and it has a bunch of exported data. And the only thing you really need to know about this is that I'm going to assume that all of this is in the same location on every single worksheet. So A1 has the salesperson name, 2 has their title or what they do, and then this data here is going to start in A4 and B4 and go down as low as it needs to go. And when things are exported, usually you're not going to have some fancy Excel tables and all sorts of things like that. You may get a CSV or something like that and then import it. So that's why these guys are not tables, which could make our life easier or more difficult, depending on if you're familiar with that syntax. But the point is, everything is in the same location on all the worksheets. And that's all we need. So let's hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window and go to Insert Module. And let's call this guy Sub directory create and we basically have two things that we're going to do here we're going to add text and formatting and we're going to then get values from the worksheets that we care about so we do need a few variables let's go with ws as worksheet and ws dash as worksheet and how about dashboard next line as long we're going to use that to figure out what the next line of empty data is so that we can put some data there and depending how big you wanted to make this you could have a lot more variables you'll see that in a moment but this is good for us it should make it nice and easy to set up and manage so let's go ahead and go ws dash control space to fill that in because we declared the variable worksheets dash board and before I continue, someone did ask me the other week, how do I get option explicit up here? Just type it. So if it doesn't appear automatically, not a problem. It's just a setting that does it automatically. You can type it, no problem. And that just means you have to declare all the variables that you use. Helps to avoid some errors, <laughs> but not all. So anyway, we have our worksheet set up now for the dashboard, so we can use this dude to reference the dashboard worksheet. So let's go ahead and set up the layout for our dashboard, WS dash. And I'm going to put each element on a separate line here. It's a little bit verbose, but it makes it really easy to manage. So in A1, I want to put this directory. And let's go ahead and just copy that guy. And for one, two, three, four, that should be enough. We want to set up our table name sales view sheet and summary and these references i'm reading them off notes but if you didn't have that just go back here figure out how you want to set up your dashboard and you should be good to go and also if you don't have a dashboard worksheet by default then you can go ahead and add that so just add this worksheet get a reference to it then store it in the variable and then you can go ahead and add these guys here so you would add the worksheet up here. And if you take my full VBA course, of course, you know how to do that. 
not a problem. So A1, A3, this guy is going to be 3, 3, 3, but we're going with uh, B, and C, and D. Now, we have our dashboard set up nice and neat, so what do we want to do? Well, let's get some data on it. How do we do that? Let's go through every worksheet in the workbook using a nice for each loop for each WS in this workbook, not worksheets. So we're going to go through all the worksheets in this workbook. Uh, next, WS. And remember, when we're in here, WS refers to the current worksheet that we are looping through. We're going to go through all of them, but we don't want to deal with all of them. So let's make sure we're not dealing with the dashboard. WS.name does not equal WS-dash-dot-name, then, and if. All right, so we're just saying, hey, if the current worksheet that I'm looping through is not the dashboard, then let's go ahead and do something. And I'm using the name property of the worksheet to compare it to the name property of the dashboard worksheet, which we set right here. There's lots of different ways to do that. You could just hard code the text dashboard in down here. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. This is a bit more professional how I did it right here. That's a lot to cover. <laughs> but I want to make sure that I get a lot of details in without getting bogged down. So let's go ahead and what do we want to do right now? Well, we want to go, we're now going to be looping through these worksheets. So we're over here. We want to get all the data that we want from here. And all I want to do is, well, I want to get this and this, so the information about what's on here. And then I want to go ahead and get a sum of these values. And I don't want to use an actual in-worksheet formula for that. Or I kind of do, but I don't want it to be here in the dashboard. I want just a hard-coded result value there for that. So what do we need to do? Well, we first need to figure out where to put the data here. Then we need to get the data and put it there. So let's use our dash next line variable control space to fill that in. And let's get the next empty line dashboard cells. And we go rows.count to go to the very bottom of the worksheet. And which column do we want to use to get the next empty row? Let's use column one, which is where we are going to have the name. So there should always be something in that column. If there isn't always something in that column, use another column. Or use one of the many, many, many additional ways to get the next empty row. So rows.count, comma, one, close that guy up. And let's go end, Excel, up, and offset. This is the standard way to get the next available row. So now we're going to have that as a number. And then we can very easily start inputting it into the dashboard. So cells, which line? Well, dash next line, which column? One for the first one. And what do we want? Let's go for the value. And how do we get the value? Here's going to be the name value. Well, we access the current worksheet that we're looping through. We go to range. And where is that guy? It's in cell A1. This is why it's so important that everything is in the same place on all of the worksheets. So A1 dot value. And... I am going to copy this guy and go one, two, three. We're going to change it just a little bit in a moment. But we go two, three, four. For the second one, this is also going to be a value. But what do we want here? We want our sales. But I don't want to just input the sum function. Let's get the result of it. So let's use the worksheet function. And I'm going to use a special method of accessing it here that allows you to, if you wanted to, catch any errors. But we're not going to have an issue with that here. So application.sum is going to run the sum function from the worksheet. And what range do we want it to run on? Well, let's give it a range from the worksheet we're looping through. ws.range b5 to b. Let's just make life easy, OK? There's more advanced ways to do this, but let's say They'll never sell more than 10,000 items or 100,000 items. So that's a sum range. We'll close it up. Then we'll close up the sum. Now, let's skip this guy right here, number three. That's going to be a very interesting one. And let's go to number four, summary. Easy, easy. WS range A2, because that's where our summary is, dot value. So what we have done now is... 
we've gotten the value from A1, the value from A2 for the summary, and we have summed a bunch of cells here. Of course, assuming there's not ever going to be anything under here except for numbers. But how do we get the link here? To get the links, we are going to use the hyperlink function. And it is kind of an annoying function. So let me go ahead, go to the dashboard, and paste one in. Well, it's not annoying, but there is some tricky syntax that we have to pay attention to. So here is one of the hyperlinks that we are going to be building. This guy right here. Now, what do we have? Well, we have right here a fully qualified reference to range A1 on the Tyrell worksheet in a specific workbook, which is this workbook. Then we have a pound sign in front of it. Lovely. Then we have some view text at the end. The pound sign up here, or the hashtag, is usually what's going to throw people off when they're making these hyperlinks, but this is what we have to recreate in the code. And if you take my full VBA course, you'll know there's a very nice, simple way to get this guy into the code without too much difficulty. So let's go ahead and try that right now. Alt F11. First off, we go here and we change this to a formula because we're going to input a formula. There's all sorts of interesting things you can put here instead of value and formula. How about the formula R1C1? <laughs> we cover that in the course. It's not as difficult as it sounds. So what you want to do is quote, quote, because everything is going inside of quotes, paste that guy in, and then go right to left and give every quotation mark a friend. But it's going to be a little bit more tricky here. So let's go ahead and just give this guy a friend, and we'll give this guy a friend. And we do need a quote here, so let's give this guy a friend, and we will give this guy a friend. But now, how do we get this? It's actually quite, quite easy. So what we are going to do is to first get this element right over here ready to go. And what I'm going to do, since the hashtag can be kind of confusing, is I want to put that guy on its own. So now that we've given all the quotation marks friends, if we put another quotation mark here, we are actually back into the VBA code and out of the string. So this will be a self-contained string. And now I can go ahead and ampersand and then put just a single quote around the hashtag, the pound sign. Then we can go ampersand, and we are isolating all of this. So we can go ampersand and one more quote here. And all we have to do is to take this entire guy, delete it, and what do we want? Well, we want a range reference on the worksheet that we are currently in. So WS dot range. Let's go to cell A1. You could go to whatever cell you wanted to. And then we get the address property. It's a great little property. And it has one option called external. And if we set that equal to true, it's going to give us a fully qualified reference, not just A1 or A2 or A3. So we close that guy up. And we are done with this guy. It can be a little bit tricky, so get the formula working first in the worksheet, then pop it in here and add all the quotation marks and hope that you don't make any tiny little errors. <laughs> it's very easy to do that. But now what do we want? Well, we want to link back to the dashboard. So what do we have to do? Well, we will reference where we want that link to go. We want it to go on the worksheet we're looping through. Let's go range, how about D1? And we're going to go for a formula again right there. And for our formula, we are going to use almost exactly the same thing as this. So we will copy it, go down here, and let's remove the incorrect quotation marks, put the correct ones in. There we go. We change WS to WS dash. And, oops, let's go to the right, change this guy to view dashboard, and we should be good to go. And this will actually get everything into our dashboard, but now let's go ahead down below the loop and add some formatting. And we could use a with and with here, but I'm going to go ahead and make one line for each formatting change, just so it's a little bit easier for everyone to see what's going on. 
and make any changes that you want to make. So let's go range A1 dot font dot bold. And if you ever forget the formatting changes, use the macro recorder. It's going to give you a lot of stuff, but it should be relatively easy to figure out which is the stuff that you want when it comes to formatting. So we have one and let's go two, three, four, five. And how about a six? And for this guy, we want a three. Okay. And C three down there. D three. And this guy is going to go font dot size. And we're going to make it 14. So just a little bit bigger. And now what we have, ws dash dot range. Let's go B4. Let's make our life easy and just hard code a value. You're not going to have more than 10,000 worksheets, are you? I don't think so. So B10,000. And let's set the style of that guy equal to currency so that we have some dollar signs in the dashboard where we put our sales values. And let's just grab that guy. And here we are going to go C4 to C10,000. And let's go ahead and center that guy. These are going to be the Lynx XL. Where are you? There we go. Center. And let's auto fit everything. It's going to make it much nicer. It's when you double click a column, it auto fits everything that's inside of it. So WS dash dot columns and a colon d if you're taking my full vpa course you'll know there are many ways to do what i'm doing right here but putting entire column after the entire column reference though not necessary is going to be a little bit easier if someone takes this code and changes it on their own and doesn't realize that you have to reference an entire column to auto fit so we are now done now Use the macro recorder to figure out all the tiny little changes you want to make for formatting. It's a real, real, real pain to remember. This is very simple because it's simple changes. But the moment that you start adding a lot of additional stuff, you'll see that formatting is lovely, <laughs> especially when you work with shapes. So we now have it completed. Let's go ahead and test it out. Alt F11. We have an empty dashboard, and we have no links here just some data. And we hit Alt F8 to run it. Directory create, run. There we go. Perfect. And we have no formula there, but we have our hyperlink formula here. So we can see hyperlink. We have our pound sign, fully qualified view. And let's click uh, this guy. And let's check view dashboard. Perfect. So it's really just a few lines of code. It's not that difficult. The most difficult thing is going to be to get the hyperlink functions to work correctly. But once you do that, it's just a little loop and some formulas and some values, and you're good to go. And that's how you can very quickly and automatically make a directory a worksheet with links to all the other worksheets and back to the dashboard using VBA. Remember, you can do so, so, so much more with VBA, and my full VBA course covers a lot of that. And that's why it's over 50 hours long, because there is so much to cover. And there's a link to that below this video.